Alright, Star Monster fans. Jonathan Demi. Yes, that Jonathan Demi. Caged Heat. Let's check it out. The movie starts with a shootout. from here to Carnival Correctional Institute for Women. You are an accessory to the grievous... This so time. our ladies and this is your last opportunity to surrender need to undress concealed narcotic drugs or weapons on your person. Jack is our main character. Jacqueline Wilson. She's the one we saw get busted there. Hi, Jackie. I'm Bill, Mr. Pandora. It is so claustrophobic in here. You better. You stinking klepto! Prison can be a rough place. No! Kevin, help us, Bill. Stick that way. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, all right. She's had enough this time. Barbara Steele plays the warden. Superintendent McQueen. Some of the ladies are putting on a play or some skits and stuff, which is very crude and dirty. The inmates love it. McQueen does not. So I can't show you the shower scene, but while the other girls are showering, this one's trying to escape. In fact, she's escaping to the staff kitchen area where she's stealing some food, some eggs. She drops it to another girl who's in solitary confinement soon after a riot breaks out. The warden's unhappy. This particular women's prison also has a doctor on staff who likes doing medical experiments on the ladies. What's the point of all this? I have no idea. The girl who's been sneaking through the uh, walls and everything accidentally kills one of the staff members. Oops. Later on, when the women are out on some sort of work patrol, to even run off, there's Cheryl Rainbow Smith on the left. Two of them escape and steal a police car on their way out. Then go to visit Crazy, who is fully clothed here, but is involved in some sort of kinky game. Crazy, uh, Maggie! Maggie, out of sight! Oh, wow! Did... Turns out her customer too, is a cop. You're safe, buddy. I ain't going anywhere with you. Help! Come on! Crazy! Help! 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 Santa Form. That will permit me to do some work on you. More medical experiments? To satisfy me. That it's okay for you to be paroled, but you're not a menace to the community. Is it a deal? So he's going to do the experiments, which require her top off. While Rainbow Smith watches. Well, it's none of my business. But they're doing really weird things to her. Spit it out, girl. The doctor, he... He's crazy. It's dangerous, The two girls in the house, I want to get I back in. Go back for them. That's your problem. I'm not putting my ass in the sling for them. I'll to rescue some of the other girls. Help. I've got a foolproof plan. You've got an impossible fucking dream, so... so armed to the teeth, okay, they try to get back in. Drop that bottle. 
No more proof for you, lard ass. And here they come. Hey, where's Biff? He got the clap. <laughs> okay, go ahead. The warden has shown pictures of the women topless that Shit. he's been experimenting on. Cookie. So they take the warden, the doctor, and they try to make their escape. Which doesn't go completely oh. as planned. Oh, oh, oh. Keep shooting at this, probably not aware that there's a uh, staff in the prison in there and they're shooting their own people. They make the break. Away they go, and that's our film. All right, we got a view from the couch tonight. So Roger Corman Classics, Caged Heat, starring, uh, I'm sorry, uh, starring uh, Erica Gavin, Garvin, Gavin, can't remember, Cheryl Rainbow Smith, the adorable Cheryl Rainbow Smith, Roberta Collins is in this. Roger Corman produced this, as I said, and directed by Jonathan Demme, who I believe won an Oscar Best Director for, not Caged Heat, but Silence of the Lambs. I'm sure he was not uh, nominated, or at least one for, one of the two for uh, Philadelphia also, he directed that, so... Anyway, uh, this was his first feature film that he and wrote and directed, um, and uh, it's uh, kind of like, for, in some ways, kicked off the women in prisons flick. I should shouldn't say it was the first because it wasn't, but um, it was an interesting one because this film kind of was all over the place. We followed different plots; they were all interconnected, but we followed different plots from different. Uh, women in the prison and there was a couple women who escape and then they want to go back to rescue some of the other women because there's this weird doctor on staff who was like doing medical experiments and I'm not even sure exactly what he was doing or what the purpose of what he was doing was for but he was doing them he was like giving them electroshock therapy and stuff and they were screaming um Barbara Steele plays the warden uh, superintendent uh, McQueen is her name she's supposed to be this rough and tough uh, superintendent but she's in a wheelchair she doesn't really have a lot of speaking lines to be honest with you we don't see her much <laughs> so I, I don't know she wasn't that much of a menace put it that way um anyway uh, as women in the prison flicks go uh it's had the usual stuff we had uh, multiple shower scenes multiple nude scenes you know what we didn't have in this movie though was um a lot of uh sexy stuff uh there's certainly i don't recall any lesbian stuff in here which is unusual for a film like this uh, again plenty of shower scenes though uh was there anything i don't think there was um yeah and uh yeah, so that aspect was missing. It was fine, though. Uh, relatively short film, a little, just a little under 80 minutes long. Um, yeah, ultimately, uh, the two women who escape, they come back in to rescue a few other women. They get into this big shootout, and there's it's a, it's a major shootout. There's uh, Police are killed, and uh, some of the prisoners are killed. The doctor is killed. The warden is shot. Uh, she's alive at the end of the movie, but uh, will she survive? I don't know. And then, uh, like, four or five of them escape in a car, and that's how our movie ends. Will they get away? Who knows? Now, I think they made some pseudo sequels to these film, this film uh, later years, like in many, many years later. I don't know if it was a legit uh, sequel or not. I doubt it, but just in name only. But that's it, Cage Teat. Now, this film actually, for what it is, it's not bad. It's got a little bit of tongue-in-cheek kind of stuff in it. Um, plenty of nude scenes to keep you occupied, uh, if that's what you're looking for. And, of course, this has Cheryl, a.k.a. Rainbow Smith, in this movie. I love her. I've always loved her. She's one of my favorite uh, 70s exploitation actresses. Um, she was in Cinderella. She was in one of the Cheech and Chong movies, a couple of the cheerleaders movies. Um, uh, adorable actress, Lamora. She was in that, but unfortunately, she got involved in drugs and I think like heroin in the in the eighties. Her career just dried up. She ended up going to prison a couple of times, and she died of hepatitis in two thousand three, two thousand two or two thousand three. Young age, she was like forty five or forty six, something like that. So uh, it's a shame, but yeah, she was a, a lovely, lovely actress. 
And uh, yeah, it's too bad. She did a lot of good films, a lot of films that I have in my collection. So anyway, that's Caged Heat. I'm guessing this has been released on Blu-ray since then. It's kind of regarded as a as a pretty good film for the genre that it's in. Um, so it's kind of popular. It's a little renowned, a little cult film. So I'll leave a link down below to the Blu-ray if it's there. If not, I'll put the DVD there. Check it out. Leave some comments. It's a classic. Caged Heat. Watch it. Bye.